So now that we've covered some of the major anatomical structures of the heart and we've looked at some of the like internal chambers and we've looked at these internal valves, our atrioventricular valves and our semilunar valves, I now wanna spend some time talking about the actual circulation and start to talk about the, the, the overall circuit that is our pulmonary and systemic circulation. I know I've shown this diagram to you guys a few times, but what we're gonna be doing here is focusing very much on the right-hand side of the heart here. So the pulmonary circuit begins at the right-hand side of the lungs. Now this is filled with deoxygenated blood that has just finished its full circuit around the body. So what is going to happen is that this blood, this deoxygenated blood is going to enter the right atria from the superior and inferior vena cava. The blood then is going to be um, pushed from the atria down into the ventricle. Then the ventricles are going to constrict and what that is going to do is it's going to cause our AV valve, our tricuspid valve to snap closed. This is to prevent the blood from moving from the ventricle back up to the atrium. This is going to then cause the blood to move up and through our pulmonary semilunar valve into our pulmonary trunk. Now what is then going to happen is that from the pulmonary trunk, it is then going to bifurcate. So it's going to go and split into two, sort of like a T-section. And what that is going to do is going to split from the pulmonary trunk into our left and right pulmonary arteries. Now, there's a key thing here. A lot of people tend to make the critical mistake of thinking that arteries carry oxygenated blood. Is that true? Mostly yes, but there are definitely some exceptions. A much better way of thinking about it is that arteries take blood away from the heart because this is one of those exceptions. We have our pulmonary arteries, but the blood is deoxygenated. It hasn't reached the lungs yet. As it leaves this pulmonary trunk and goes down the left and right pulmonary arteries, it will then, those arteries will start to get smaller and smaller and will go down to our pulmonary arterioles and then we'll finally get to the pulmonary capillaries of the lungs. And it's in these capillaries that we're going to see gas exchange. This is where CO2 is removed from the blood and oxygen is put into the blood. And we're going to be talking about that when we cover the lungs. From our pulmonary capillaries, we then have our freshly oxygenated blood move down our pulmonary venules, down to our pulmonary veins, and will then reach the left atria. So, a quick recap. This entire pulmonary circuit will start in the right atria. How is the blood getting there? Primarily from the inferior and superior vena cava. From there, the atria will constrict. It's going to squeeze and push blood from that atria into the ventricle passing through that tricuspid valve. The ventricle is then going to constrict and that's going to push blood from the ventricle up through our semilunar valve, our pulmonary semilunar valve, into the pulmonary trunk. From the pulmonary trunk, that deoxygenated blood is going to split into the left and right pulmonary arteries. Those left and right pulmonary arteries will then continue on to the left and right pulmonary arterioles until it reaches the left and right lung. And from there, we see the pulmonary capillaries. We exchange or release CO2. We accept oxygen. Then we move on into the pulmonary venules, pulmonary veins, until it reaches the left atria. And from there, we begin the systemic circulation. 